Hey everybody, welcome back to Weldon Eldon Fabrication. Glad you're here. And today we are going to be talking about AC stick welding. So, I've got my Lincoln Electric Buzz Box out here, this wonderful unit. And we're going to go over some of the differences between AC welding and DC welding. So first things first, let's go talk about the current that you're going to be using in AC. Okay, so here's a uh, graphical representation of your AC current. As you can see on the one side, I've got your direct current negative polarity on the top and the direct current positive polarity on the bottom. So, what AC stands for is alternating current. So, when you're using AC, you will have a certain amount of your current in the negative polarity and a certain amount of your current in the positive polarity. When you're doing stick welding AC, these two should be even. I've kind of, you know, misdrawn it a little bit, but what can you do? So, the way this graph works is the more into this polarity you go, the higher this arc is, the more amperage you have here. So, if this is 100 amps right here, we'll just pretend <clears throat> I could have 100 amps into the DC negative polarity, and on the other side, I should have the same 100 amps in the DC positive polarity. Now, the reason that it matters what rod you use with AC is you'll notice that you increase amperage over time, and then it decreases, and then it hits this zero point. This zero point is why you have to pay attention to what rod you're using with AC. So with AC, you use a 7014 and a 6011. You don't want to use the 7018 because on the 7018, when you hit this zero point, your arc will shut off and it won't relight. As opposed to with the 7014, when it comes through, the arc will shut off, but it will relight going into the other polarity. And so it'll shut off, relight, shut off, relight, and it'll continue on and on and on and on for the duration of your welding. But you need a rod that will relight its arc when it passes through this zero point. So that's why you use a 6011 or 7014 rod for this. So now that you kind of understand some of the basics on AC current, Let's go over to the machine, we'll get it set up, and hopefully we'll be running some welds here. Okay, so the first rod that we're going to set up is our 6011 rod here. <clears throat> now, as you can see on my Lincoln Buzz Box, I have significantly fewer settings that I can uh, work with than I did on my Everlast. Namely, I have this one knob to set my amperage. Simplicity is nice. Simplicity is nice. The reason that these machines last so long is because they are a simple setup like this. Now, with the AC current, because it alternates current between the positive and negative polarities, and it has that zero point there, you always need to set your AC current a little higher than what you would set on your DC current. So, usually on DC, they, you would start out at about 90. Again, in my 6011 video that I did on DC, I started at 100 because I liked that a little bit more. But most of the time on DC, you'd start at 90. With AC, and the way that I think about it because I have this particular box, I go two clicks higher than what I would on DC. So on DC, if I'd be on 90, two clicks higher would put me on 115. Now. Again, if you don't have the clicks, that's okay. Just give yourself more amperage. So 90, I'm going 115. If you're at like 120 for like an eighth inch uh, 7014, if you were starting at 120, I'd probably go, well, probably 145, 130, somewhere in there. The thing with AC is you've got to play with it a little bit. Get a setting that you think will work and then get a couple pieces of scrap metal, start an arc, see how well it runs the bead, and then adjust from there. So, we're going to start at 115. And I'm going to take a quick moment, we're going to go over technique on this, and then hopefully we will run a bead. 
Okay guys, so here's the scrap piece that we're going to be using today. As you can see, I've run a whole bunch of beads over this trying to get the uh, settings to lock in. And uh, I'll admit, it, it's, been, uh, it's been a bit of an adventure getting this thing to run right. So, <clears throat> if you guys remember from when we did our 6011 on the other machine, it's going to be the same exact technique. You're going to come in, you're going to tap your rod, get your arc started, bring it in, and then you're going to whip it across. So you're going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and then when you get to the end of your bead, you're going to come out, come back in, let it fill in a bit, break the arc off. And then more likely than not, because this is a 6011, I'll be coming back in and filling in that crater with just a quick restart, quick fill, and break it off. Now, one of the reasons that it took me a while to get these settings locked in and why there's so much metal on this, this particular machine runs a little bit voltage heavy. So that means that I have a very liquid puddle. So, in order to counteract that, what I've got to do with this machine is I have to keep a very, very short arc length. I cannot let my arc length get long because the longer your arc length, the more voltage you get in your arc. So I've got to keep this very, very tight. I've got to keep this a very, very short arc length. So, I'll probably have to make some adjustments to the machine, but Let's go ahead, throw a rod in, we'll throw on our safety gear, and we'll see if we can run a bead and see how well it comes out. So, back in a bit. So, there's our bead right there. Now, you can kind of tell at the beginning where I started the bead, it looks a little cold. Needless to say, I don't have a hot start function on this machine, so that's a pretty normal occurrence. But as we got into the bead, it started getting hot. And while I was under the uh, hood there, I could tell that it was starting to dig. It was starting to dig into the metal pretty good there. So it was getting hot, and like I said earlier, this machine is kind of volt heavy, so even though I was really trying to keep my arc length short, it just started digging. So, But anyway, there's a bead for you. It's not too bad, but this is also a good point to point out. Don't expect to have amazingly pretty beads on AC. Usually it doesn't happen, and that's just kind of an unfortunate nature of the beast. So. Let's run some 7014 as well, and we'll go over the settings and technique on that, and then we'll make a bead. So, back to the machine here. We had our machine set at 115 for an eighth inch 6011. I'm actually going to leave that setting right there, because for our 7014 here, remember, our 7014 is a 332nd rod, a little bit smaller than an eighth inch. So, I don't need as much amperage in order to get this rod to melt all right. So, we're going to go ahead and leave it at 115. We'll go ahead and throw in the 7014 rod, and we'll see what kind of a bead we get. Quick technique moment here with your 7014 rod. You're going to run it the same way that you do on DC, <clears throat> and it's also the same way that you run a 7018 rod. You're just going to come in, strike off the metal, get the arc to stabilize, and then just drag it along. And just drag it along. Now what I'm going to do here is <clears throat> I'm going to stack a bead. So I've got my initial bead right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim for the toe of this first bead, the 6011 that we just ran. I'm going to aim for this toe, and I'm going to use that toe as the center of my weld bead for my 7014. I might have to come up on the weld just a little bit. We'll see how liquid the puddle feels, but <clears throat> that is the technique for when you're stacking beads. So aim for the toe, fill it in right along the toe, use the toe kind of as the center of your next bead, and then if you keep going, you'll just use the toe that you just ran 
and you just keep stacking up until you get the desired height of a weld that you want. So, <clears throat> let me go ahead, set up, throw the safety equipment back on, and we'll go ahead and run a bead for you. So there's the bead. It looks pretty rough, doesn't it? <laughs> um, again, I had a pretty harsh cold start there, so that didn't help much. But uh, as I got going, I, oh, come on, camera focus. As I got going, the voltage started setting in, even though I had a really short arc length, and it just, uh, you know, it got hot, it got liquid. So running AC is just difficult. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of practice, and frankly, it takes some better quality rods than what I'm using. I'll be dead honest on that one. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and set the amperage a little bit lower and run another one for you guys. And this will kind of serve as like a troubleshooting when you're welding away, troubleshooting way, to just kind of see if you can get a better bead. So, let me set my amperage a little lower, I'll kick it down a notch, and let's see if we get a better bead. So there's the new bead, right there kind of on top. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but it did lay in there a little bit nicer at the lower amperage. So <clears throat> hopefully that kind of shows you guys, you know, you're not always going to get an ideal bead, and sometimes you just need to make adjustments, and that's really all there is to it. So the bead before we were running at 115 amps, uh, I knocked it down to 100 on my machine and it laid in there a little bit better. It did lay in there a little bit better. It's a little bit crowned in the center. Uh, part of that's gonna be because I was, I'm was i stacking the beads and I was stacking it on top of the other beads that I just did, but it definitely laid in better. So anyway, there you go. That's AC Weldon. I hope you guys learned something and this might be the end of the stick welding series. I don't know yet. If I think of something else that I want to show, I'll probably add it on. But until next time, guys, we'll see you on the next video.